I'd like to give a big shout out to the Hoodoo Gurus who have given us permission to use part of their song, That's My Team, as our new podcast episode intro for all of their music. And whenever they are going live or performing live, head to their Facebook and their Instagram. The links will be in the description below. Be sure to give them a like and a follow as well on Facebook and Instagram. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Final Tackle Podcast. We've got a very special guest, a gun player back in his day. Currently lives in America. He played for the New Zealand Warriors, the Kiwis and St. Helens. And most notably one of probably the most biggest incidents in the 2014 Grand Final in Super League history. His name is Lance Hahaya. Cheers for joining us here today. No worries, thanks for having me. No, no worries. Um, so, let's first of all um, talk about your grassroots. I'm probably butchering the town name, so I apologise. Um, Tani, Tani Wahrao. Um, I probably said Pretty that. close. Uh, okay. Um, Tani Faro. Tani Faro. Tani Faro. Okay, yep. Yes, in Tani Faro, what was it like growing up in Tani Faro for you um, and making it in the big league eventually? Um, yeah, I mean, it was a, a pretty pretty staunch rugby league town. Um, you know, it was, I, I, I had a great time growing up there. It's a small, you know, sort of rural, rural-ish community. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, my dad, my grandfather, my mom, and my grandmother on my dad's side all grew up in the town and um so, right, had, so big you know, family yeah. town for you yep yep so mum and dad grandparents obviously grew up there so um yeah there's a lot of history there and um it was, it was, it was a good place to grow up you know i got into some trouble and had some fun and um you know learned some lessons and lived on the farm and uh trained and you know got to see the big city eventually in auckland oh. um but yeah i had yep. a good time um you know, I went to school in Hamilton. You know, got to go to a private school through a sports scholarship in okay. uh, St. Paul's Collegiate. It was actually a rugby scholarship. So okay, so rugby played union. Rugby, played rugby union, athletics, softball. So I, I did quite a few sports. I was going to say, um, yeah, did you play any sports when you were younger? And obviously, yep. yeah, so I continue. Yep, so I did play a lot of sports. Um, obviously, it was a you know big part of my childhood. And What made you stick you know, to rugby league out of all of those sports choices then? I guess, um, I don't know, it just kind of drew me, just the physicality and the competitiveness and obviously the history, family history as well. My, you know, dad, granddad, my older brother, I have an older half brother and, uh, you know, all my younger brothers, we all played the sport and it was just in our genes and our blood, I guess. And I think I was, at, I was probably best at rugby league than I was compared to the other sports. You yeah. know, I played cricket, played softball, did, you know, athletics, um, but this but one came really more naturally to you, sort of thing. Yeah, I stood out obviously playing that, and, and even rugby union. I was, you know, I was playing. I was making the rep sides for rugby union, you know, sort of thirteen through seventeen before I um, obviously had to focus on league yeah. um, exclusively. So now that's yep. fair enough. And speaking of union, very briefly, what are your thoughts on? I'm sure you've heard the NRL and the rugby union possibly bringing a combination of the kangaroos versus the kiwi, so like, um, all blacks. I think that All Blacks are going to absolutely destroy the Kangaroos. I think it's, I mean, it's tough, obviously, because, you know, I'm coaching Rugby Union now in the US, and yeah. it's, it's, it's such a different sport. I mean, obviously, if, if it was a game of Rugby League, uh, the, kangaroo, the Kangaroos would win. Yeah. Um, yeah. If it was a game of Rugby, the All Blacks are going to win. You know, the scrums and the lineouts and the breakdown. Yep. And, and rocks and moles. Apparently, just, they're going to put, like, 14 aside win. to make it that middleman. Really? I just, I don't know, but I'd still think... It'd be interesting. It'd yeah, be interesting to watch for sure. Yeah, for but, sure. I just um, think the All Blacks will have the physical edge on them, you know. Yeah, I think it's just just uh, I don't know. It's a tough one. I I, th- I would I would certainly like to, to see that happen. But mm. I, I I've seen a few um, stories about just like safety, player safety around certain like how how are you going to play the game? Like what are the rules going to yeah. be? Yeah. Um, how are they going to be interpreted? How are they going to be refereed? So I think you know, in theory, it sounds great. Um, but when it happens, I don't know what it's going to look like um, it could look I'm like intrigued. a hot mess <laughs> I'm, I'm intrigued for sure I'd like to you know I'm interested to hear more about that I'm not I'm not sure if it's like something that they're, they're just threw out there as an idea or if it's a gen, genuine genuine like gonna concept. happen I really um, I really hope I, I really hope we get to see it at some point um because obviously yeah. the world's um, in a little bit of a turmoil without, like, because they don't really have sport much at the moment. Like, sports are only right. just starting to come back, so it's a great idea. Yep. And as as you mentioned, um, you are teaching rugby at the moment. Um, I'm 
as far as I'm led to believe, it's for the Davenport University. I may be wrong. Um, what's that like for you, and how's that going at the moment? It's good, yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, I moved here five years ago now, and mm -hmm. when I first moved here, there was no rugby league at all. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, okay, so um, they don't really have rugby league in Michigan at all. Oh, wow. Um, but, but they have rugby union, and I got involved, you know, with a the, with the team, and I was just part-time, really, just offering my time. And then about two years ago, uh, the team that I'm coaching now, sort of, I found out about them, and they've got a they're called a varsity sport, which yep. is funded by the school, um, fully funded by the school. You know, my job's full time as a coach, and we're a Division One team. Oh wow! Um, we have academic and athletic scholarships available, so we've got some really good athletes on our team, some yeah. international boys. Um, and it's going, it's going really well. This is this will be my third year. Obviously, COVID sort of has bugged uh, that up a little bit. Yeah, kind of. Basically, we we lost our entire spring season, which was March through. Uh, June and this year um, and that was the end of our, our academic year because our academic year is a little bit different. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it goes from the end of summer till the start of summer, very similar like New Zealand and Australia. Yes. It's just a different time of year that it happens though. Yeah, so we're mid-summer right now. It's pretty hot. We've had a heat wave. It's been like 35 degrees every day and pretty muggy oh. and, and sticky. So, um, yeah, yeah we're, on a, we're on a summer break and in the fall, which is what our autumn is, in the fall semester we start back for our hopefully for our rugby season but i mean we, we don't really know what that is going to look like with covid and yeah. the, the social distancing and the restrictions and the phases that we're going through so yeah there's a lot of, there's a lot happening but i'm enjoying my job it's great to work with the guys you know they're student athletes so they go to class and then they come and practice and train with us we've got our own little practice schedule um and yeah it's a lot it's a lot of work but i enjoy it it's fun and i've got some good coaching staff that that's me so pretty happy and content with that at the moment yeah no that's good to hear um and let's talk about your first grade debut for the new zealand warriors sorry um good in the um you obviously going from tani Falau all the way up and then getting told right lance you're getting your first grade debut what was that like and running onto the field for the first time and all that jazz it was awesome. I mean, I remember, I think 12 months before, I was just coming back from an ACL reconstruction Ooh, and I was playing down <laughs> for, for Tani Fado and Daniel Anson came and watched me play and uh, I was just kind of coming back from my ACL, so I, I didn't know how... Definitely I weren't at your peak, by the, I'm guessing, because of so, the ACL. Um, but I think I I think I scored a couple of tries and Daniel saw enough of me to get me up to, to Bartercard Cup, which is what it was called back in the days in Auckland. And then turn, you know, went to preseason that year. <laughs> And then I think it was uh, PJ Marsh got injured. Yep. He broke his ankle, unfortunately. And then Monty Beetham got hurt uh, playing hooker. And then I sort of was um, coming along through the ranks in in the 2002, you know, preseason. And yep. um, got an opportunity in round four, round four against the Cowboys in, in Townsville. Daniel came up to me and kind of tapped me on the shoulder one day at training and said, "Hey, mate, I'm gonna I'm gonna play you this weekend." And and I was like. What? <laughs> what do you mean? And he said, I'm going to play you this weekend. And I was like, well, first grade. And he said, yep, first grade, mate, you're in. Like, we need you to play. Like, are you ready? And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. So, yeah, I think, I mean, obviously all the boys are high-fiving me and congratulating me. Um, you know, we had a pretty young team back then. Mm. And, and we were all excited and, and, and playing really well. And we had a great year that year. So I was lucky. And I remember scoring a try. My mate Brent Webb put me through a yep. hole off a scrum. And, um yeah, my my mum and dad were there, and um, oh, Matt wow. Butcher was there. And so, did you get was, the win? Good. We did win. Yep, we got a good win. So that was uh, that was always a always that's a always that well. cherry on so, top for a for a debut for sure. Yep. And I don't remember too much of the game. I remember that we won. I remember being nervous yep. start of the game, obviously in the changing room. And I remember after the game winning, I remember scoring a try. And then I rem I remember uh, Mad Butcher, who's a good friend of mine, taking a photo of me on the sideline. And yeah, he's he's been a good friend of mine for years. You know. Um, the butch so and but but the emotions and the feelings i, I still remember those today yeah it's yeah exciting time. honestly that's amazing who was your rugby league idol as you were growing up um i like the you know the ricky stewart's the laurie daly's terry lamb you know the the small sort of nippier well i guess laurie daly's not small but um yeah. you know wally lewis um alan langer terry a little lamb, bit stewart, alan langer sort of that era you know even stacy when yeah Stacey was a, Stace, a yep. but you I ended up getting to play alongside stacy didn't you i did yeah so he was obviously when he came through the warriors when the warriors started 
I remember watching Stacey when it was uh, the Bartercard Cup and he was playing for the Auckland Balkans. And my brother, my older brother, was playing for the Waikato Cougars, who was uh, who were who were a Waikato team. And, and um, yeah, I, I remember watching Stacey and thinking, man, that kid, that kid can play. And uh, he was only young then, and I was even younger at the time. But um, yeah, I, I Terry Lamb, Ricky Stewart, like those guys. Uh, Wally Lewis, obviously, before before them, and. Um, and then you know Stacy sort of more more recently mm-hmm. before, before he became a teammate. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, which teams were the toughest to go up against for you personally, as in physically and mentally in the NRL and in your time during in the Super League? Um, in the NRL, I think it. I mean, it changed from year to year. You know, obviously my those first couple of years, the Roosters were really good. Uh, they made you know we played them in the final that year, mm-hmm. um, and then. Physically, I remember like Canberra being just so big and tough to tackle oh. all the time. Obviously, I yeah. remember they had just big units in their team. Um, you know, playing them in Canberra when it was cold and um, rainy, it was it was always tough. And then, yeah, I guess the change sort of as the years progressed. You know, Manly was always a tough team, yep. um, physically and and mentally. They went through that period 2008 through 2010, 11, where they were really just really hard team to beat. Yeah, uh, Melbourne obviously. Um, so I would say, yeah, Manly, Mel- Manly Melbourne were, were always tough, both physically and mentally. Yep. Uh, Canberra was always a tough team physically. You know, I don't want to leave obviously anyone out because all the games we played were, were tough. Yeah, but those um, ones were more was, standout sort of thing. Yeah, yep, for sure. And then Super League, um, you know, I think Super League was probably, I felt like it was more physical mm-hmm. um, than the NRL. The NRL probably was a little faster and just played differently and, and refereed, you know, obviously with the two refs and interpretations were different. But, um, yeah, the big the big Warrington pack was, oh. was tough to play against. Yeah, they, um, they were a physical team. Uh, Wigan, obviously, Wigan were both physically and mentally, you know, they, they'd wear you down. I yeah. remember the first the first two years I was there, I was there. this is when Brent Finch was playing and oh, Sam wow. Tompkins was sort of at his peak and, um, they were just they were just almost unbeatable you know we were we were we were we were getting beaten pretty convincingly by them um, in the first few years and then you know we we're sort of able to string some wins together and, and build our roster up a little bit and then and, and win the grand squad. final um, um, against uh, Wigan which just quickly dabbling as I know you don't really like to talk about it because what's it's really been been said about it all a very yep. big incident to anyone who's listening that hasn't heard of it um, you did get absolutely KO punched and I, I personally I coward punched in my opinion by uh, Ben Flower in the 2014 Super League Grand Final um, if you could just give us a quick um, very quick brief on um, how you felt, um, you yep. know, a day or two after, you know, really after gathering stuff and all that about it. Yeah, no, I'm happy to talk about it. Obviously, it's not something that I can hide from. Mm. It's, it's out there, and uh, I just sort of felt like, you know, there's, there's, I've, I've talked about it and said what I needed to say, really. Yeah. But I think, um, oh, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah, I sorry to interrupt real quick. I was going to say I have read interviews, and Ben has said that he does regret it every day of his life. So to anyone who's listening. Ben does not condone what he did, and it was just a very big poor lack of judgment during the game. Sorry, continue. No, it's fine. I mean, as I said, it, it's you know I understand that those those things can happen, and um, as I said, I've talked to Ben since then, and you know obviously it was disappointing to to have that happen, but um, you know I just sort of moved on and, and put it to bed. But yeah, I mean I I, I do I do have uh, some fond memories, obviously, of playing for St Helens, um, and. You know, I've got some good mates that are still playing there now and still keep in contact with, with a few of the younger guys that are now sort of maybe in their late 20s. Yep. Um, but I, I enjoyed my time there. You know, it was it was hard to be away from home. Mm. And I did have a couple of things with, with uh, a few coaches every now and then to, you know, that, that all players go through. And then obviously, yeah, ended a little bit sourly with, with, the, with the grand final incident and then sort of me having to leave the team early. But, um, you know, I think everything happens for a reason. And, and I guess that sort of happened for a reason and yeah. um you know i've I, as i said I've, I've put it to bed and, and moved on and um there's really you know no no animosity or anything from my end so yep and there's no hard just, feelings towards ben and vice versa no no i mean i don't have any hard feelings i mean um you know as i said we, he, he apologized and we talked about it and i said look you know it, it happens i understand and you know i shouldn't have shoved you and you know we should have just gone out there and played played rugby league mm. like we were supposed to do and yep 
Uh, obviously, the heat of the moment and emotions and all that gets thrown in there. And, yeah. And uh, it's not always an easy thing to do. But, um, yeah, thankfully for us, we did win. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I know they've gone on and, and won a title since then as well. But, um, you know, our team did win, so we were at least able to, to celebrate that. Yeah. No, that's for sure. Out, out of, you could say, something real bad that happened, a good thing at the same time also happened. So what yep. are your thoughts? As we you just mentioned, there was two reps in the NRL back when you played, but it was also one when you started in the NRL. What's it like? I don't know if you've been watching the NRL this year again, um, but they're back to one ref, the captain's challenge, and the new six again rule. What are your thoughts on all of those new and or re-implemented things in the NRL? To be honest, I haven't watched too much NRL recently. I watch a lot of the highlights and obviously mm-hmm. catch up on, on, the, on the Warriors. Um, and I do have the NRL um, app that I look at, but I haven't seen many of the games. You know, it, it'd be hard games. doing it over in America, yeah. wouldn't it? There is there is an NRL.com subscription that you can sign up to, but I haven't had it this year. Um, to be honest, it's just hard to find the time. And I do, um, my dad would probably hate me saying this, but I do actually watch a lot more rugby now because I'm coaching rugby. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I watch a lot of the super rugby and, and obviously that, that takes up a lot of time too. I've got two young boys um, and just sort of life gets busy and with the time difference, it's hard to, to find that. It to definitely find that would time. be, yeah. And I, I do think it, it sped it sped up the game. I, I believe that the you know obviously the the six again rule is it's, it's a tough great. one. You don't want to make any mistakes, and oh. you don't want to you don't want you don't want to be on the back end of that too many times. Yeah, you don't want to be on the receiving end. I think last night uh, with the Roosters Cowboys, there was two or three six agains in the one set. Right. I mean that can change a game completely. So um, yeah, it's a tough one. And as I said, I, I mean I haven't been watching enough to see to see all of the changes. Um, but I know I like the captain's challenge. I think that's a good one. Um, I think it is. You know, you don't always get it right, and sometimes players can see things that that get missed. And you know, I think it's nice to have that option. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I, I'm again very much in agreement with that. I personally think though they should have two if a game goes into extra time because we've seen a few extra time games this year. I think get the regular one that you get during the game, and then in extra time, have yep. one allowed during extra time you know okay. because some of these extra time games have gone That's into fair. the second half of extra time right so okay yeah I, I think you know maybe do that um but only have a second one but when it comes into this um, golden point sort of time gotcha um if you could have a superpower what would it be and why um I would have to say fly. I mean, you know, it'd be pretty cool to be able to fly. And, you know, you could just jump and fly away and go wherever you need to go. I mean, I could come home. I mean, I don't know. Can I fly around the world? Yeah, um, if you can fly, you can fly. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice, it'd be nice to come home. Um, you know, if I, if I could do that, be, be able to zip home for the night and see some friends or, um, you know, spend a couple of days back home. Or um, I think that'd be a pretty cool special superpower to have that'd be pretty dope yeah um talking about your time with your representative time for the kiwis you played quite a few games for the new zealand kiwis what was it like pulling on that jumper you know representing your your country you know it was awesome yeah i love playing for the kiwis um obviously very very uh staunch kiwi and um every kiwi is a staunch kiwi (laughs) even, even, even living here in the u.s you know i'm still very uh you know, I make sure that my boys know that they're they're half they're half Kiwi and half American. Um, you know, I've taught the boys the haka and yes, and uh, they don't they don't know it too well, and they've got American accents, so it doesn't sound very. <laughs> oh, good that'll much. be so interesting uh, to hear that. <laughs> yeah, so but they know about you know I talk to them about yeah nah and all those things, and they they kind, kind of like, what does that, and, what and does that, that mean though? and chili bins, <laughs> <laughs> chili bins, and and I say put it in the boot, you know, and they they they're like they what. Say, Differently, but trunk um, isn't it in America? It's a chunk or something. Trunk, yeah, I don't use that, but um, they know what you know, trash and rubbish. I'm like, put it in the rubbish instead yep. of the trash. So, uh, sorry, I digress. But no, yeah, that's Kiwi, all good. I loved, uh, you know, I love my time with the Kiwis. It was, it was, you know, I, I really, really cherished those those moments. Now, looking back, obviously, and at the time, I knew that that uh, that that was that was a special occasion. You know, all the Kiwi tours we went on. Um, you know, just just the an- you know the national anthem at the start of the game, and I still remember. You know, standing there looking at the crowd and, and, and the thoughts that were going through my head, my family and, um, you know, loved ones and just... It would be like a next thankful. level emotional game sort of thing. Yep. Every time. Yeah, just being thankful, just being thankful to, to be able to do that, that I was here representing, you know, my country and my family and my friends and everyone that, that knows me. And that was, uh, 
Yeah, that was awesome. And, and everyone else that was, you know, standing alongside me and whether it be the English team, the Australian team and guys on my team next to me all felt the same way. And there's just a lot of passion involved, you know, a lot of passion in, in the international level. Um, that is just, it's different from, it's different from the club level. It's different from NRL. And, yeah. and, and it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to describe, obviously, but I'm sure you could imagine that, you know, it's just, it's another level and there's different emotions involved for, for, for obvious reasons, obviously with, uh, you know, it being, you know, your country and your family and all those things. Um, so, yeah, very thankful to have played as long as I did and, and the amount of games that I did. And, you know, pretty, you know, I, I cherish those memories and the guys that I, you know, played alongside, you know, especially the World Cup. That was, oh, that, was that, that would have been amazing. Um, it's the, the 08 World right. Cup for you guys. Yep, that was, you know, definitely definitely a highlight of my career. So that was, that was, that was a fun time that year specifically was you know the Warriors we did really well we had a bunch of guys from the Kiwis uh from the Warriors sorry in the Kiwis team that yep. year um and it was yeah obviously then we went on to win the tournament it was it was a great year for us and uh and the country and our and our nation so and our and our sport which which was uh yeah it was fun fun time that would have been amazing um which coaches had the biggest impact on you personally on and off the field during your career and even things that you carry into your life these days? I think uh, to Daniel and Ivan Cleary. So Daniel was, um, uh, he was the, he was my initial coach in the mm -hmm. beginning when I, when I was young and I had him for three, I think three years, three years. And, and he, you know, he, he instilled a lot of things into me, you know, and he was a teacher and he was very detailed and, detail orientated and, and disciplined in the way that he coached and uh even now when i coach and you know, i tell my guys hands up when you're catching the ball um and just just these little cues that he used to have and yeah i mean daniel was you know he was a smart coach he was a smart guy well i mean he, he got did, you guys to a grand final in 2002 yep. you yeah. know? and then so ivan was the, the next coach to get the warriors to a grand final yep so we had uh yeah, we had a great we had a great time with with Daniel. He was, you know, he he sort of knew when to relax and he knew when to laugh and he knew when to really be serious and he knew when to be angry and uh, you didn't want to see the angry side. Nah. <laughs> you know? Angry Anderson, you could say. Um, <laughs> but he was, yeah, he was he was a good guy. He actually coached me for the Exiles when I was in England. He okay. came over as a guest coach and it was, you know, like twelve years, thirteen years after we oh, last wow. season. And uh, yeah, it was great. Uh, you know, I really enjoyed hanging out with him and, and catching up with him again and sort of laughing about. You know, sort of how I was as a youngster on and off the field, and you know, I was a little wayward when I first came in, and, and just you know, I was 18, so yeah, um, straight out of Huntley and Hamilton, and, and I sort of and living in Auckland City and all this money, and sort of you know, got a little bit carried away at times, uh, enjoying myself a bit too much, basically. But um, yeah, he was he was a great guy, Daniel. He understood that, and, and, and he he um he sort of kept me in line pretty well as well as he could. And then, yeah, Ivan. So Ivan was, Ivan, you know, he was there, what, six years, seven years of my career at the Warriors? Probably, I think, five, five or six. Um, so, yeah, he coached me a lot. You know, I had a lot to do with him. Um, you know, he taught me, taught me a lot about, you know, discipline and, um, you know, just, you know, playing what's in front of you. And, and he really, he really appreciated the way that we, that we played. Um, and it was hard for me because I, I was a utility. So I was always, in the team but it wasn't necessarily where i wanted to play uh, i guess and yeah it was kind of hard to, to to play and train for four different positions and not really know <laughs> not where really I was know which one you were going to end up in yep um and it's hard to really get good at one specific skill for one specific position because i was from year to year sometimes i'd be a fullback and then a hooker and then back to being a fullback and then a which hooker position again did you prefer back, playing so. personally um i liked all of them to be honest uh, i liked fullback i liked playing in the halves i like hooker um you just like being in the spine really then by the sense. yeah I just i like playing i like being in those those ball playing positions where you touch the ball a lot and thankfully the way when i played those positions i was able to do that a lot you know i guess uh the game has changed as well oh, too sure. since uh you know fullbacks touch the ball a lot more nowadays you know whereas five years ago the the, the role was different but um you know obviously my skill set at hooker and fullback and, and six and seven or wherever I was playing you know, I'd try and play in a similar way you know and just create opportunities basically and, and um, yeah I, I, even, I even liked that about me and, and yeah so it was, it was, it was good we, we had some good we had some good years under Ivan when I was there that's for sure no that's good to hear um, only a few more topics left 
First one is, did you have any pre-game rituals or superstitions? And if not, and even if you did, who had the weirdest superstitions and routines during your time at St. Helens and the Warriors? Um, so when I, when I was obviously pre-25, 26, I didn't really have any rituals. Yeah. I'd just, you know, turn yeah, up and play, do. basically. <laughs> um, and then sort of later in my career, I didn't really have any rituals, but I just did have like, I'd kind of sleep on, I'd sleep on myself the night before a game. So I'd get a good night's sleep. You know, typically I watch a movie. I'd have a nice, you know, past the meal. Um, I'd get up and go for a walk early in the morning, stretch, and you know, kind of just get myself ready for the game. And and I didn't necessarily have any rituals. That yeah, was it was more of a routine sort of kind of a routine that I'd go through. And then sometimes, you know, obviously then I had kids, and one would be screaming all night or two hours <laughs> for three hours of the night, and one would be sick. And then. So then the routine just went out the window and I still played well. So I was like, oh, okay, that's good. So, um, but yeah, I don't know. I didn't really have many uh, guys that had weird routines. I know when I was at St. Helens, uh, a guy named Johnny Lomax, he's in the English team and yep. he's still in the St. Helens team now. He used to get a, he used to get, you know, we used to kind of rip him a little bit because he'd, he'd have, he'd be very pedantic about like, about his, you know, the way his socks were folded and, um, he was a little bit OCD and it was kind of funny guys would, you know, move things around so that he, he yep. wonder where they are. And, oh. um, but he's a good guy, Johnny. I, I got on well with him. He's, he's, he was a youngster when I turned up at St. Helens. And, now he's an old you know, head. <laughs> yeah. and now, now he's playing really well and he's an old head in the team. So Tommy Makinson was another one. You know, I got on well with Tommy and uh, he and I still chat every now and then on social media. And um, But yeah, Johnny, Johnny was a funny kid. He's, he's a good guy. And as I said, we got on well. And but he, he did have some some some, some rituals that he liked to do, and and even the guys would be like Johnny, you're stretching like way too much. Like your your hamstrings are they they they're actually longer than they need to be, and like guys would just give him a hard time, and uh, <laughs> like he would just stretch for like hours and hours and hours and hours. Oh, and wow. like, oh, you're, very, like <laughs> you're flexible enough. You're actually too flexible. So, <laughs> um, but like I said, good kid, and um. You know, as as I said before, I had I have had some good memories and made some made some good friends over there. No, nah, that's cool. Um, and last topic is: is there any advice that you'd like to give to kids um, or teens, just in general, that are hoping to make it in the big league one day, whether that's union league, just professional sport in general? Yeah, a couple of things, I guess. Um, you know, if coming from where I'm sitting now, um, I think it's you know obviously. You know, talent is going to get you identified, but it's your work ethic and your desire and your willingness to make sacrifices that's going to uh, ultimately lead to your, you know, success. So, um, and I don't know if people really fully understand what that looks like at the at the very elite level. Um, and if and if and if kids can understand that at a young age and start making the sacrifices, I'm not even talking about, you know, not going out when you're 21 and drinking and partying and going to birthdays and things like that. You you just you have to make those sacrifices and it's going to pay off for you eventually in the long run. Yep. Um, so with that one, um, the old adage of hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work. That's it. Yeah. And then if you've got talent and you work hard, then you're going to be Then you're going to be even better. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, you know, and, you, you, and you, I think about someone like Jonathan Thurston, yeah. you know, he's just tireless in the way that he, he trains and prepares and, you know, Cooper Cronk and guys like that. And even Stacy, you know, Stacy mm. was just a tireless worker when, and and he was a good role model for me you know he'd be out first on the training paddock and the last one to leave and um so i you know i sort of i I saw that and and i was doing that stuff too because it was important to me and i had that competitiveness and that drive to to be to be great and to be good and to and to improve so um and then i think the other important thing is just to have something outside of football yeah what was your outside of football thing? so i was i was always um so i tried to study on the side as well so i'm thankfully i'm trying to um finish the last sort of two years of my degree now with davenport university and i'm mm-hmm. able to do that free because i'm a coach and a full-time employee mm-hmm. um, and what, I, what degree I, is that it's a uh, business management okay so it's uh, yeah bachelor's degree of business management so i'm uh probably about 18 months away from finishing that and i did i was studying that sort of part-time it was about over about six years yeah. and then i did take a break when i first moved here um, but I did finish that and I was studying on the side and, you know, I like playing golf and relaxing and whatever it is, if it's a business venture, if it's podcasting, um, and things were different when I was back when I was in early twenties as well. I think there's a lot more opportunities now for kids to take advantage of their profile. Yep. 
Um, you know, if I had my time again and I was playing now, I'd, I'd be pretty excited about the opportunities to to, to make money um, and to, to to build your brand and and um, you know, as I said, branch out and, and do other things. And I think that's important too to have to have something outside of to outside help of balance food. the intensity of the being an elite athlete sort of thing. Yep, you need balance in your life for sure. You can't just you can't just all forty or forty or forty. It's it's uh. It'll burn you out it's, afterward after a while, wouldn't it? Yeah, it is, and it's never a good thing to just put all your eggs in one basket. So I think it's always good to diversify and and, and have some put your energy in, into something else as well on the side. You know that's fair, um, and that's more or less all the topics that I have listed down. So first of all, thank you very much for joining me, and no I'll get you on at the end of the NRL season, and we can talk about how the Warriors went and all that jazz. Yep, sounds good, mate. Thank sounds you very good much. To me. Um,